Hi there, folders. Um, I'm Aunt Dean. For those of you who have never seen my picture or seen me before, um, and today we're doing something that's pretty historic. We're doing a live global lesson that we're broadcasting that will be uploaded on YouTube later for all time. And we're going to tackle one of our toughest folded problems, which is electron density. Um, we have here today Kars, Karsten W. We've got Catfish here, who's going to take your questions and feed them to me. We have Susumi, and we have Timo. Now everyone's been muted. We're going to take all the mutes off and let everyone roll. But this is what we're going to do. Karsten is going to start. He tends to look at the electronic density in a more gross and overall manner than um, a lot of people do. Um, obviously all three of these folders have slightly different approaches and we're going to learn from them as much as we possibly can. So without further ado, if you have questions or comments, please just type those into Global. Catfish will be feeding the comments um, into the Hangout chat area, and we will get to all of your questions. Uh, we don't want to interrupt our presenters while they're presenting. Um, unless there's something that needs to be clarified and we'll just go with that. Anything you've got, ask the questions and let's all learn something wonderful. Kars, if you would be kind enough to take it away. All right, so we're going to start with the, how to approach the electron density cloud. So let me uh, put that up on screen for you here, one sec. All right. Now, can everyone see my uh, my uh, protein? I can see it. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So, <laughs> right now, what you're seeing is a uh, mostly completed protein, a completed electron density cloud. So you can kind of see that it can be done. <laughs> so you're aware of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the protein out entirely. And I'm going to change the focus. OK. Now, this is a, a nicer one because we've already had it trimmed. It's just one protein electron density cloud. And as you can see, we're having a little bit of trouble because the protein itself causes the electron density to disappear. Um, but if we uh, ignore that, maybe this in a little closer, it might help. Then what we do is we look at this cloud and we start turning it like this. You don't want to keep it still because if you just leave it here, just like that, what do you see? You basically see this uh, blob. And you really can't tell what you're doing. So when you approach electron density cloud, Start turning it, move it. Uh, we like to say it's like a microwave oven. If you want to watch your meal, uh, the little black screen gets in your way uh, in the microwave. But if you start moving, bobbing your head back and forth, you begin to see things. Okay. In this electron density cloud, it can be difficult depending on what threshold you use. So what you want to do is you want to come over to your electron density. And here down at the bottom, you see a threshold. This is key. Watch. watch. Now, if you want less information, you've got less information. Pull the other way, and then you can fill up the screen. Now, why is that important? It's the same reason that when you're tilting it and turning it and rotating it, you gain a new perspective. You have to familiarize yourself with the electron density cloud. Otherwise, it's just too intimidating. So we move it around, we change the threshold. And the other thing we can change is the alpha. This makes it less or more translucent. See that? Everyone is going to be different. 
every person. So you have to play with those functions until you say, oh, you know what, I think I see something. I see maybe a helix right here. Okay, and you see maybe a side chain come up here and a side chain come up here. You won't see these things if you leave it still, so you gotta constantly rotate it, become familiar with the protein. Excuse right? me, Karsten? Yep. Could you close the chats? You, you've got a lot of um, things hiding there. Yeah, sure, sure. That would be great, thank you. So, yeah, now you have the protein here, um, but Basically, you can't do much with the protein right off the top. You have to get familiar with the cloud itself. You can start building a protein on the outside if you want. Some people do that. Or you can start threading it on the inside. What I like to do a lot of times is just put that protein in there, even if it's a mess, and start building something out of it so that I can look at it and say, well, that's all wrong. But at least I can say, okay, why is it wrong? What is it I'm looking for? So. The main thing I want you to take away before I send it over to Timo is this idea that you need to keep it moving like this and you need to play with the threshold to a level that you start seeing things. Okay, sometimes a little information is, oh, that looks like a helix, that looks like a helix, that looks like a helix. Okay, so you want to play with those things. Um, and, uh, and you can always build on the outside or build on the inside and just get it going. All right? So go ahead, Timo, and uh, you can tell them what you do from there. Yeah, I'm online now, I believe. Let's show. OK. Uh, when I started on uh, 746, I saw a f yeah, in the density cloud some things. Yeah, and it looked like just helices. So I just put four helices a bit parallel and, and, and put it in and I didn't bother to do anything with with this part. Um this was my first attempt. Not, not very lucky. Come on. Ah. Sorry, wrong key. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. So I went on. And, and this attempt was already a bit better, scoring-wise. But still uh, not really good. And I noticed somewhere in this cloud a turn. I can't find it uh, now. Let's um, let's go to the the Edivia thing. Come on. Um, three density. No. Okay. Sorry about this. Maybe I can see it now in this one. No, I, I can't really see it. But then I was able to place at least two helices on the right place. And that resulted in this one. And again, I have to reopen the density. I hate this.
And as you can see, the density matches a lot better. But this one has a big problem. Um, the there's there is a piece here that's almost outside. This this piece here is almost outside. So then I reversed two helices and I got up to come on <laughs> up to this one on this one I saw here on this helix hydrophobics sticking out they shouldn't stick out. So what I did was I shifted that helix. Shift the helix, that's not so simple. You have to do a little trick. Where is he? You first have to make a sheet, then you can select it and shift it it takes a bit of time ah oh, come on yeah my computer is pretty loaded because of this broadcast I, I believe Yeah, here it is. Now wait until it's there's yeah, flip and shift. And I did it again. Come on. <laughs> Okay, and now I reverse back, of, of course, to the to the helix structures, and have to do a lot of cleanup. First shake, that takes time, then a little uh, wiggle side chains and then I use my DRE to clean up uh, the rest of the, of the mess that resulted into this one shifted a few places And it looks a lot better, less hydrophobic sticking out. And I think this is already getting somewhere. But running the RE a long time, I was able to get to. Um, to my final score on this one where is it? come on yeah there it is which was eleven six six five And as you can see now, almost everything is inside a cloud. I will show you later 
what I did on on 750 to get even higher. That's it. Email. That's Thank fantastic. You. I'm looking at the comments in Global, and you completely have amazed everyone with the trick of turning a helix to a sheet and flipping it. But that is just um, that's awesome. That is wonderful. Okay, yeah. we um, will move right along here now to Seuss. Oh, I think we're going to go back to Karsten for a moment, but I do have a question for Timo. The script that you say you run for a long time, is that DRW, Deep Rebuild Worst? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, okay. That's one. And, and another one I use uh, to clean up sometimes is, is my band maker. Okay. My band maker uh, just keeps the pro team together. Yeah. But, but gives it some freedom to move. Unlike uh, zero length bands, bands because that uh, one uh, yeah can move uh, restricts the movement too much. I think. Okay, so that's your so, band maker. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. and um, which is a, on, a, a script uh, that's in the beginning. Global. In global, and um, I think you said it's actually a fairly old script. Yes, Tima? Yeah, it's a fairly old one. Yeah, uh, and and the other script that I I've used a lot on on this puzzle, especially in the beginning, that was uh, Raf Bis. Um, how is it? The bands in space it's, script. Um, let's see on my other computer how it's called exactly. Um, rough GB uh, Beast version 2. Okay, so that's and the. Beast is banned yeah. in space. Yes. Just the to in space. Uh, and um, because. Um, ED puzzles is just about placement in space, and then bent in space. Yeah, Wiggle finds the best places from itself. Well, thank you very much, Timo. Now, cars. I think we'll swing back to you now for a bit. And sure. At this point, can you please be sure to close your chats? <laughs> yes. We're getting in the way of us seeing what we want to see. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's get that screen share back up here. Okay. So uh, we have uh, what you start out with, right, which is really hard to work with because it's this long string. And... Uh, so Timo was great. He showed us what it is we're trying to uh, accomplish, where we're trying to put our structures, and how we're trying to put it in there. Um, one of the questions you might have is, well, where do I even begin? Like, how do I know I'm going in the right direction to begin with? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to start off where Timo um, brought us, which is at the different helices that are in 750. Okay, so we have these columns right here. We have a column here, and we have a column here. All right, and these are your your where your helix will be. You now you got one here. Okay, the question though is always, well, where do I put my protein? How many of these helices? How many different arrangements can I make? Okay, so what you want to find are uh, some at least some sort of uh, place you can always go back to. So for instance, for me, I started right here. You're going to see, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a tab here. Okay. You'll see this, what appears to me, is a sheet, or two sheets running close together. You see that? I always like to have something I can always go back to. So if I get to turning it and shifting it and I'm starting to put stuff in there and I go, oh, I'm lost. I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. 
I go back to that one area that I decided that I would always remember, and I would start again. Okay. What I liked in this particular protein about these two sheets is that we know we already have five helices here. One, two, three. Let me return it. We can see four and five. But what you want to see is where they connect, right? So they, I can take it. I can say, oh, look at this. They connect right here. See that? Okay. Helix one, helix two. There's a connection. Okay. Why do I want to find these connections? Because if I find these connections, I know that it's not an end point or a spot where we begin, right? Because you can't begin a helix with a turn into another helix. So this end point right here, right, that can't be here, and it can't be here. Why? Because it's connected. It's connected. So what you want when you're threading into the electron density cloud is to find continuity. What do I mean by that? I want to travel down the electron density cloud like this. And I don't want to jump the cloud. So I don't want to run my, uh, here, let me move it and I'll show you what I mean. I don't want to put a piece in here. OK, see how it's nice and more in there? We all know that's not correct placement, but that's not the point right now. We don't want it to run across to here, OK? Why? Because they're not connected. There's no continuity. You've jumped the cloud. So whenever you can avoid jumping the cloud, try to avoid doing that. Okay? Um, that means a lot of tedious work. You go down, 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 through, and you have to stick with the cloud. Some clouds are going to have pieces missing. So you're not always going to have that convenience where everything continues. Okay, but try to find the smallest chumps possible. Okay, the other two things you can do, I'll finish with this, the other two things you can do is change the depth that you're looking at the cloud because you can actually see almost the whole protein when you back it up. You look at it, wait, 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 I see that, look at that. See that? Look at those helices sitting there. Okay. Change your perspective. Pull it back in again. And when you start threading it, sometimes you're really going to have to get in close because you have to make sure that you didn't travel down here and then cross over to here. See? You have to stay in your cloud. Stay in the lines, okay? Um, so we're going to get rid of those two. Or maybe not. Okay, well, anyway, um, and uh, the other thing you'll have to do is you'll have to watch your threshold again because sometimes you'll find that they converge um, right here, okay? Well, what happens when I've got an intersection? Now, how do I know? Which direction do I go? Do I go across this way? Or do I go across this way? That's where you got to play with your threshold. And I usually say <laughs> the one that holds on the longest wins. So watch. I bring it thinner, thinner, thinner. Right? I go, oh, look at that. This one broke away. See? Now you've jumped the cloud. I don't want that one. I'm going to go this way instead. You see? So now you follow your turn into your next structure. You see? If you find all your turns, well, you may not even have to find all your turns. Eventually, what you'll come across is a spot and a helix that has no, that, that has a dead end, right? Right here, look at this. Where does the end of that helix connect? Nowhere. That is a beautiful thing in electron density folding. When you find the end point, or a beginning point, right? Because now you know that it's either segment, it's either your first segment 
for your last segment that goes here. So now you have a 50-50 chance you can build it backwards or forwards. But if you can find your end point in an electron density field, that is goal. So look for those whenever you can. And now I'll send it back to Anthony. Thank you, Cars. And I believe it's time for Sue Sumi. Okay. Oops, can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. I, I succeeded in using the unmute button. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I want to show you um, some tricks that I've learned about finding side chains in the cloud. I'm going to start with a screenshot from an old puzzle. Um, oh, my screens are moving around. No. Nope. Okay, tell me when you see that screenshot. We're good. Okay, so um, this is puzzle 714. This was our five-year anniversary puzzle from an older electron density puzzle. I no longer have the puzzle on my hard drive, so all I have left is this screenshot. But I wanted you to notice some things about this, the side chains. So after I've got most of the backbone into the places I think are right, then I start looking for individual side chains to help confirm that I'm in the right spot or to tell me that I need to move the backbone up or down a little bit. So some of the things I look for, down here in the lower left, uh, these hydrophobic side chains, these orange ones that are shaped like paddles, often make good landmarks. This is the kind of paddle that has a tip on the end. And in a very clear electron density map, you'll see a pocket for this paddle that's narrow on both ends and wide in the middle. And that's a clue that that's the kind of side chain that goes there. Over here, closer to the middle, is a paddle with no tip. And in a clear electron density cloud, you'll see a pocket for that that's narrow at the neck and wide at the end. And that's a clue that that kind of side chain goes there. Now, in the current electron density puzzle, the clarity is much less than in this example. And I'll show you that in a minute. But this is, this is sort of the ideal case that I look for. Um, some other things that I've noticed, if you look here in the upper right, there are two long blue side chains. And they're not covered by any cloud at all. And this is not uncommon for the long blue ones. When you have orange side chains, they always have some cloud to go with them. But the long blue ones sometimes have no cloud at all. Or they may have no cloud for the neck and then just a little blob for the head. Now, sometimes you can improve that by increasing the threshold the way Karsten showed you so that you're seeing more of the cloud. But sometimes it just isn't there. So if you've got a long blue one sticking out, you can't find any cloud to put it in, don't panic. That's normal. Um, here in the center of the protein, I've got three little Y-shaped orange ones in a row. And in this very clear electron density, each of them had a T-shaped pocket to fit into. And that's what you really want to find, is that the, the size and shape of the pocket in the cloud matches the size and shape of the side chain. Again, in the less clear electron densities, like the one that we're working on now, you won't be so lucky. But this is kind of the ideal case that you want to look at. Um, one other thing that I learned on this puzzle, if you look up here in sort of the top center area, you'll see a hydrogen bond, this blue and white thing, that's connecting this orange side chain to this blue side chain down here. And in the electron density cloud, there is a little tunnel that belongs to that hydrogen bond. There's no side chain in the middle of this tunnel. It's the hydrogen bond itself that was visible enough to the electron density machine, whatever that is, uh, mm. that it could draw some cloud there just to hold the hydrogen bond. And I'll show you some of those in the current puzzle. So let me see if I can switch over now to the current puzzle.
Okay, so this is puzzle 750, the one that we're working on now. Let me, oh, and I'll tell you another trick that I have. When I'm working on the backbone, when I'm first trying to fit the protein in the cloud, I like to use the solid electron density shape. For some reason, it's easier for me to see shapes in that, large shapes like sheets and helixes. But when I get down to the side chain level, I really prefer the wireframe. I'm going to make this just a little bit more see-through. For some reason, it's easier for me to see the small shapes in the wireframe. Okay, I'm going to, I want to look at this red side chain right here. This is one of those paddles with a tip on it, but it's hard to see because there's so much stuff around it. So I'm going to hover my mouse over that segment, and I'm going to press Shift Q, and that's going to focus in on only things that are in the plane, the same plane as that segment. So you can see it, it zoomed in on it for me, and it has cut away a lot of the cloud that's not close to that segment. Okay, in this electron density cloud, there is a pocket for this segment. It's got kind of a blob on the end. It's a little bit narrower at the neck, not a lot narrower. I wish it were more narrow at the neck, to be sure. But um, it is a little narrower at the neck. Now, it does not have a tip on it like that clearer electron density had. It's just a blob. But the fact that it's in the middle of the protein, which is where I want those large hydrophobic side chains to be, is a good clue. So I put that in there. I'll tell you, I originally had this one, which is like a double paddle. I originally had that one in that big blob, but um, I ended up turning it. Marie has often said that tryptophans, that's the name of this double paddle, is a tryptophan, that they don't mind being on the outside, even though they're hydrophobic. So I decided if I could only hide one of them in the middle, I would hide this paddle with the tip on it and let the tryptophan hang out in space. Okay, now I want to see the whole protein again, so I'm just going to press the Q key without the shift, and it goes back to the whole thing. Let me see if I can find another example to show you. Here's a paddle. I'm going to use Shift Q to zoom in on it. This is on the blue helix. This is a paddle with no tip. And you can see it's got a blob to live in, a blob of cloud, but it doesn't really separate itself out with a, a visible neck and head which is what I'd really like to see, but in this less clear density, it's just not separated out like that. You can see this is a big blob that even connects down to another part of the helix. So in the less clear densities, that's what these things can sometimes look like. It can just look like a very fat part of the backbone. Um, and if, here's another paddle on the blue helix where the two of them, their, their pockets, their spaces in the cloud kind of uh, glom together. They kind of mix together there. They're not very clear. Up here on the right, this is a one of those blue side chains. You, you can't tell because everything's blue on this helix right now, but if you had it in blue and orange view, you would see this is a blue one, one of the long ones. It has no cloud at all, just like we saw in that screenshot. And that doesn't bother me because I've learned those long blue ones often have no cloud. Okay, I want to look at the sheets that Karsten picked out. Let me use Shift Q to look at these. Okay, I'm going to go back to solid view. I'm going to cut the threshold down just a little bit and look at those sheets. Now, I don't currently have any sheet bonds in here. I would like to see hydrogen bonds between these two sheets, and I'd like to see them being straight. They're kind of crumpled up now, so I've got some work to do there. But you can see there's a tube of cloud between these two sheets. That's where the hydrogen bond goes. That's not a place where the backbone connects to itself. It's a place where there's a hydrogen bond between these two sheets. So that's another clue to me, since there's one there and there's one over here. That's another clue to me that these are sheets, that they've got these parallel spaces for hydrogen bonds to go into. Um, this greenish side chain here in, in my current build of this protein has four hydrogen bonds to the backbone. And you can see that there's a big blob of cloud that's filled up by the end of the side chain and by the hydrogen bonds. So that if I didn't have the protein in there, let me get that out of there. That might look like a big blob of backbone, 
but because I knew the backbone had to connect down here and it had to connect up here, I was left wondering what's going to fill up this blob here since it's not backbone. Well, the answer is it turned out to be hydrogen bonds. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, I'm not sure I have an example of it on this protein. When you're first looking at the cloud, let me take the protein out of the cloud for a moment. Whoops. When you're first looking at the cloud and you find a helix, sometimes you can see that the side chains coming off that helix are slanted in a certain direction. Like this side chain slants up, this one slants up, this one slants up. There's one down here that slants up. So most of the side chains on this helix are slanting toward the top of the screen. And that tells me that the lower numbered segments are going to be near the top of the screen in this helix. The higher number segments are going to be near the bottom of the screen. So when I'm fitting protein helixes into cloud helixes, sometimes I can find that clue that tells me which end goes up. So the side chains will slant towards the lower numbered segments in the helix. Okay. I think that might be, oh, I had one other comment. So I, I mentioned that the long blue hydrophilic side chains sometimes don't have any cloud. Sometimes they have a complete long pocket to fit into, but sometimes they have no cloud. But when you're looking at orange side chains, they will pretty much always have some cloud. You'll never find an orange side chain where the head has a blob and there's no neck. Now you might have to turn the threshold up a little bit to see the whole side chain, but there's always going to be some kind of a blob for an orange side chain. Um, let me turn this to blue and orange view so you can see that a little better. So when I'm looking at side chains and using them as landmarks, like, oh, there's a paddle here. Where can I find a paddle to put in this space? If I find a space with no pocket coming out of it. This one's not a very good pocket. You can see my side chain is kind of hanging out of it, which I don't like to see. But if I find one where there's no pocket, or I find one where the pocket, the neck is missing and I can only see the head, then I'm much more likely to put a blue one in there than an orange one, because the orange ones generally have complete pockets. Up here at the top, you can see an orange one that's almost completely covered by its pocket. Now there are side chains in this density where the size of the pocket and the size of the side chain just don't match up. For example, this blue side chain on the right, the pocket for this thing is really long and even curves back into the rest of the protein. It's much longer than the side chain actually is. So it might mean that I put the wrong side chain in that spot. I don't see a longer one nearby in the helix that I could have put in that spot. So I'm I'm settling for what I see there, uh, but in a in a electron density cloud that's not high resolution. This one is not high resolution. It's kind of low resolution. Sometimes the size of the pockets won't match the size of the side chains, and you just have to come up with your best compromise for that. Okay, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Aunt Dean at this point. So, Sumi, thank you so much. That that was wonderful. It's amazing that we've got three different people from two different teams and that everyone is completely different in how they're approaching. But, but everyone has some wonderful tricks here. I've been watching, um, I suppose I... You can actually see me instead of, there we go. Um, I've been watching Global as all of you have been speaking, and we've got some questions, but mostly Global is just amazed, <laughs> completely amazed at how how you all do what you're doing. Now, um, what I would like to do before we go to questions from Global is to see if there's anything that you would like to ask each other Let's get a little bit more technical here. I suspect that there might be. Any of you? You can unmute yourselves now. I, I have a, a question for Seuss on the side chains. 
how much do you chop up your protein a lot or do you chop it up at all? I know you do cut points at the turns, right? I use a lot of cut points. I do this on all proteins, not just electron density. So when I'm uh, when I've got the main pieces of the backbone in the cloud where I think they go, and I'm trying to refine little pieces of the backbone, I'll cut it up as small as three segments. Oh, okay. You know, I might cut a piece that's only three segments, and I'll try to thread that into the backbone and even line up the side chains. Uh, if the three segments are bent in the wrong shape, I'll freeze one, I'll rebuild the other two until I can get the shape that I want of backbone and even get the side chains kind of pointing the way they are in the cloud. So I end up, I might end up with 20, 25 cut points once I've got everything positioned. And then I use uh, zero length bands with strength 10 bands to hold everything in place while I shake and wiggle until the score comes back up into the positive numbers before I start closing those cut points. And after I close them, I use a DRW script to clean up the bad places. So Sumi is actually known as the cut point queen in the <laughs> Anthropic Dreams uh, group room. And let me ask this about cut points because none of you really um, talked much about that. But for any de novo puzzles, and especially in the ED puzzles, am I good in assuming that all of all three of you, obviously you do, Susumi, um, Cars and Timo, you also use cut points? Oh, yeah. Uh, and also, to, when I exchanged the, the two releases from place, I used cut points to do that. Okay. Uh, I do uh, a mix. Um, I prefer to stay away from cut points as long as it doesn't become tedious and cumbersome. As soon as I'm finding it to really bog down, then I just start chopping it up and moving things. Um, but yeah, I'll try to keep it going for a long time without the cut points. Uh, I've done several electron density puzzles with zero cut points and have had no problems getting them all the way to the end. Um, can I ask then, what is it you do um, to build a helix from de novo? Uh, okay, so what I do, it depends. If I have, uh, let's say I have four sheets and there's uh, four helices in there, okay? I'll freeze my sheets good and straight. I'll just freeze those structures. Then I'll run a bander like uh, Doom on it and uh, let it crumple up. That way everything is close together. That way when I hit the rebuild button on the helix, it rebuilds and the helix just pops out straight for the most part. Sometimes I have to do a little bit of work, but for the most part I can build a helix that way. I'd love it if they came preformed. <laughs> but that's, uh, you know. I suppose we could ask for that. Can you make a note there, Catfish? We want preformed helices. You bet. I'll add it to my notes. <laughs> okay. Um, is there something else that you all would like to ask each other? Uh, I have um, a still a script uh, to to show oh. that might be handy for uh, for for ED puzzles. Okay. So I'll I'll just start that. Please. I can't do the, uh, the the big puzzle, but this is on the on the old one. When I want to find places that are not good, I just run this script. Show the this, and here I can see wow. I have to do a lot of work in this area. And I have to do a lot of work in this area. So then I know where to target my uh, my work. That's it. <laughs> and is this a script that's in global? This TVDL yeah. show worst subscoring part? Yeah. Great. Yeah. And it also lists uh, the 
um, the ED score for the for the segments, so you can see which one are really bad. That's like in the rest of the output. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, if we can, then let me move on briefly to um, while you all are thinking of anything else you might want to ask each other. I'm going to move on to um, some of the questions. Um, Smiling One is asking about uh, a link for that script, but what we'll try and do is get that a little bit later. Right now, I don't think we can stop to go find it. But what was the name of the script again, please, Timo? Um, I'll enter uh, a smiley one in, uh, in, in Globe now. It's uh, find worst subscoring parts or something. Um, okay. Let me have a look. Um, show worst show subscoring. Okay. Part. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, great. Um, now, let me go through, let, let's backtrack and go through to some of the very first questions. One of the first was using the shift Q function to look closer and demonstrate that, which you actually did, Susumi. Um, Kars, Karsten and Timo, do you also use the shift Q function frequently? Uh, I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay. Well, and there, there you have it. That's the difference between looking at something from the gross level and the the um, close level. Um, uh, Bruno Castamont was asking about: Do you look first look at the structure and then the cloud, or the cloud and then the structure? I think as we've moved on, it seems that all three of you really examine the, the cloud first and then yes. move to the structure. Am I right in that? Uh, it's mixed with me. Uh, I, I first try to find uh, a certain structure uh, from the um, how do you, from the predictions because uh, and then I build something and then I can I'm, I go to and try to put some of, of the resulting things into the cloud. Okay, that makes sense. I and look at the cloud first, but I have found when I'm looking at the cloud and there's no protein in it, it's very hard to see details. So at some point I have to glob the protein up into some kind of shape, the best guess I can make, and put it in the cloud. There's something magical about having some protein in the cloud. It makes parts of the cloud more visible to me than they were before. So at some point you just have to go ahead and put the protein in there and that will help your visual search to find the details. Yeah, I'm in agree, I'm agreement with that. Um, and I think basically what both of them are saying I'm, I'm on board with, I, I, I have to look at both the cloud and the structures and the protein. Yeah. I have to form something out of that protein, and then I have to kind of dump it in there to, to start saying, what am I actually seeing here? Okay, good enough. Okay, let me move on to the next question. Um, I think this may have also been answered while we were um, in global, while we were um, moving on here. The um, the question was the little dots marking the sheets um, and that you are doing obviously by having the ED open and um, using tab. Cars, I know that you use that often. Um, Seuss and Timo, do either of you make that much use of the that new little um, purple pinpoint? No, but, but having seen uh, Carsten use it, I will definitely win. <laughs> okay. That's I, use it, <laughs> I use it sparingly. I'll put just a very small number of dots in as landmarks. I find if I get more than half a dozen dots in there, they all start to look alike. Yeah. I'll try and to keep that too. He doesn't have the, have the sheets yet, 
but they will. So so I will pass you again, Carsten. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, I want to say one thing with that. Uh, it, I keep the, the, the push pins, those purple dots, very close together and just put them in groups in areas that I have trouble seeing. If I turn the protein and I lose the spot, so like a turn between two structures, I'll often mark that turn. But like Sue says, if you put too many, then it just becomes the same problem you had originally, which is it's too much information. Okay, speaking, speaking of too many, um, I think a lot of people in Global hadn't even realized that those existed or how to use them. Uh, can you please explain how you get rid of them and what happens if you close the puzzle and reopen it? Yeah. To those purple dots. <laughs> now, how 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 would you get rid of a few of the purple dots? Cars. If you. Okay, Cars. I'll toss it over to Sue. So let her answer that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so um, you have to have the electron density window open, uh, the electron density menu, and to place a dot, you put your mouse on the cloud and you hit tab. When you want to remove a dot, you place your mouse on that dot, hit tab again, and there's a little green recycle bin icon, little tiny one over on the right hand side, and you click that and it will throw the dot away. Now if you close your puzzle and open it again, all of your dots will be gone. If you save your puzzle and share it with your teammates, they cannot see your dots, they're all gone. If you change tracks, your dots are gone. If you go back to the same track you had them in, they're gone. So <laughs> don't ever leave that window where you put them because they won't be there anymore. That's, that's good to know. I think that some of us who have experimented found that out to their great dismay. <laughs> it's really nice to let everyone know before they start experimenting that yes, um, I think if people look at it from the point of view of with a um, quest to the native, if you have lined up um, all of your um, bands uh, to the cloud, that what will happen is that if you close that, they're not lined up the same. You have to do all of that in one session, and this is the same thing. Okay, let me ask the next question. Um, Oh, Bob and Penny had a question about a color pad it be added to dots so we could use one color for helix for sheet and Catfish uh, was nice enough to say that she would pass that question on to the developers. Yeah, it's a great um, idea. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, now um, Silverberg wanted to know how often do you change the secondary structures? Do you build outside is building outside first not good? In other words, how how exactly are you picking what to use with your structures in terms of fit? Um, hmm. my, sus my suspicion is from having listened to all of this, um, and th this was asked a little bit early on, my suspicion is that what you are doing is to put them as much you're identifying what you can identify so you're not necessarily working right to left inside out or anything like that you're you're looking for what you can find am I right in that cars yeah I think that's that's pretty much right now that can change this particular protein 750 for instance um, you had I hate to say this, but a relatively simple protein here because you just had to deal with those helix after helix after helix, okay? But some of these electron density puzzles are enormous and they're complex. In that case, what I do um, is I find an anchor. And what I mean is if I can find just any section of that protein in the electron density cloud that I am confident is correct, then I work out from that section. And so I don't even need necessarily structures because I'm going to thread that electron density with my loop if I have it. I don't care what it is as long as I just go step by step. Now, of course, if I'm going through that process and I come across a pair of sheets or I come across a helix, 
certainly I want to know what those structures are. And uh, hopefully, like Timo said, if I have a prediction, a structure prediction for a protein, I'll match it up. But for me, the important part is to have an anchor. Okay. All right. Um, another question from V16. Do you at some point, at any point, use your score to help position the protein in the cloud? In other words, you can move that protein within the, the cloud and you're making it a little more negative, a little more positive. Um, do any of you use those clues? Or do you pretty much ignore that? <laughs> on a segment base, I do that. I look, uh, I tap on a, on a segment and then you can see the density score. And, and when it's, uh, yeah, when you yeah, yeah, push it around a bit, the density score uh, changes. So, so that's how I can find the best position for that, uh, for that segment. Excellent. Just a note about that. If you tab on a segment and you don't see any density score, it just means the density score is zero. If it goes up or down, then it will appear in the tab window. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. And oh, of and, course, and we, we go uses density uh, as in its uh, evaluation of the position. So uh, Wiggle will automatically try to uh, to maximize the density score also. Yeah, it's something that we didn't mention. I'm not sure. There may be people out there who are not aware of this. The cloud is, in effect, sticky. That is, when you wiggle or shake or rebuild, your score will go up when you match the cloud, when pieces of your protein go into the cloud. So um, Wiggle in particular will tend to move your protein into the nearest pieces of cloud to where it currently is. And it's the way it behaves is as if the cloud is sucking your protein in. So yeah. it's possible to have the wrong piece of cloud grab a piece of your protein and suck it in. But if you get close to where it's supposed to be, uh, Wiggle will pull it closer and closer and closer to be inside the cloud, as if the cloud were a sticky thing. Yeah. I always have the wrong parts grab mine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's the difference <laughs> between the top ED folders and someone like myself. Um, one last thing, um, and then we'll, we'll see if there's any other questions here. Um, Bruno wanted to know, do you use Align to Density? Never. Cars? Yeah, I only for... Um when I have my protein outside my electron density cloud and I lose the electron density cloud, then I'll, I'll hit a line just to dump it back into my cloud, but I don't use it for any useful purposes, really. Okay, and, and Timo? I only use it to find the cloud. Okay, okay. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's true. I think that's been something that uh, we all get a little bit... Uh, although, I... I, I I must throw in here at one point, someone had said at one point, um, somebody did tell me that if you have your protein very into the cloud, if you've got a very high score, you can in fact use a line to density and either lose fractions or gain a point or two. And I actually had that happen and it did. I gained a couple of points. It didn't do the flip, but this was way at end game. So its usefulness yeah. is pretty limited. At that be point, you either know or you don't. Be ready with your undo key because um, oh, sometimes yeah. it will sometimes it will flip your protein 180 degrees. Uh -huh. It's very frustrating. And well, plus, most of the time, yeah. Plus, the thing is, by the time you get that protein to that level, you aren't using a line to density because you if you if you have the skill to get it to that level. You know, you're gonna do a fuse, or you're gonna, uh, or you're gonna hand move a side chain into its pocket. You're not gonna be fiddling with that anymore. I think you're right. Um, I would like to make a request here that we didn't discuss from our panelists. I have the suspicion that as people think about this, 
um, that as people um, get to see the YouTube video, some of our um, some of our audience were having um, streaming and choppy problems, uh, especially near the end here. Um, if okay with you, Catfish, uh, if the three of you would monitor the um, the announcement that's on the front page about this. Um, maybe we can allow people who have some questions to post there, and perhaps sure. um, any of or all three of you can give some answers right within that announcement. Does that sound uh, reasonable? Okay. Okay. It sounds great if you call for it. Do I, let me just ask um, Global, is there anything that was not fed as a question to the panelists? Oh, banding to the cloud. Do you ever band to the cloud? Do you ever try to band to the cloud? Timo, you're laughing. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you try what? to band to the cloud? Do you try to band to the cloud? Do I try to band to the cloud? Uh, sometimes a, a bit, but but mostly I just use my DRE that does it much better as me right. by hand. Okay, <laughs> and um, Susumi? I do band to the cloud. Uh, often I will band and then use rebuild to uh, change the backbone shape to match where the band is going to. So I use band to guide the rebuild. Uh, sometimes I will, if I can't get a side chain into a pocket, I might run a band from that side chain into the pocket and change the band strength to 10 and wiggle and that will yank the side chain right into the pocket. Uh, it might not stay there, but at least I know that I got it there to give it a chance to stick there if possible. Okay, and cars. Yeah, I, I band quite a lot. Uh, very similar to when people band to the guide on Quest to the Native. Um, I, I do a lot of banding. Um, well, I'd say a lot. Um, if I've got the protein generally where I want it, I do a lot of scripting first and hope that that finds it without me having to do anything. And I can go to something else, come back, and then if there's a couple of side chains that are still off, or just like uh, Sue said, I'll throw a thick band on there and yank it in place. Excellent. Okay, we did have, um, let's see, one, two more question. Um, one is a technical that can be answered. Um, and uh, uh, um, Fred wanted us to mention um, that players should all be aware that the density is everywhere. It's not just what you see. When we have multiple copies, a lot of times you can have one long segment that has gone off and actually will have a density score. It's not looking like it's in the cloud, but it has touched a piece, another piece of cloud that is a copy of some sort. Maybe one of you can answer that. Seuss, I know you had that happen to you recently. Can you explain that better than what I just said? Yeah, when, when the density cloud is shaped like a brick, on every side of that brick, there's an invisible brick that has the same density cloud in it. And it is sticky just like the brick that you can see. So there's a visible brick, but there's also an invisible brick on every side of that. So the, the density cloud repeats uh, out into space, I guess indefinitely. Uh, so if, you're, if you have a loop or something that goes outside of the brick, there might still be some invisible density out there that grabs that loop and pulls it into a particular shape. Now there's no way to know if it's the right shape or not. But um, yes, your, your segments will all have density scores even if they're outside the cloud because that cloud repeats over and over in an empty space. Excellent. Okay. Um, one last time, let me introduce um, who we had here in case anyone missed from the front. This was Timo Vanderland, thank you, um, who is a member of um, Void Crushers. Thank you so much. This is Susumi from Anthropic Dreams. This is Karsten W. from Anthropic Dreams. Um, Kate Fisher, Catfish, who is one of the developer, she's our community liaison, and this was me, Aunt Dean, 
I thank you so much for your participation today. Hopefully this is the beginning of a series that is going to help all of us. I think that every single person here learned something today. I know I sure did. Um, thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming. And thank you all panelists. We'll do it again sometime. Goodbye. <laughs>